Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, back in the studio on a Tuesday morning. Yesterday, the Boston Celtics took on the Golden State Warriors in San Francisco. uh, Game 5. And right out of the gate, the Warriors just looked like they wanted it so much more than the Boston Celtics did. And this is even a game in which Stephen Curry did not have one of his great games. Matter of fact, that's that's the beauty of team sports because you can rely on other stars, and Golden State has them. This guy's flown under the radar, uh, Andrew Wiggins, and he is an outstanding player. He was the team's leading scorer last night with 26 and leading rebounder with 19. A lot of folks are saying, Andrew Wiggins? Gang, Andrew Wiggins was a great player for some KU Jayhawks teams. Only played just a short time for Bill Self, but declared for the NBA and has proven himself to be in the NBA. That's why Golden State wins this. Actually, Boston made a comeback in this game little and bit, yeah. took a one-point lead at 72-71. That lasted about 30 seconds. And Golden State came back and started ripping him pretty good. And Golden State didn't have a great shooting night last night, but 104-94 kind of speaks for itself. That's the kind of game it was, and now all the Warriors need is one more win, and they are NBA champions for the fourth time in eight years. Yeah, and uh, like you said, a team, they're a really, really complete team, and the Celtics just could not hold on to the ball last night. It was not not a good not a good look on them, but uh, Thursday is when they play again, right? Correct. So we'll have to see what happens in Game Six, and they're still in California for that one. No, no, they, they come back Boston. to Boston. All right. Well, hopefully the Celtics can pull it out. I have a feeling that we might see a Game Seven, but I could be wrong. I have been before. <laughs> Interesting signing by the Chiefs right before the final OTAs, uh, one year contract. Um, you know, we saw little flashes from this guy last season. Uh, just another weapon in the offensive arsenal, in my opinion. You just named it. That's exactly right. They signed Jarek McKinnon for depth. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to make the team. Of course not. It's a one-year contract, and the one year is only as good as he's there with the team because they can cut him any time. The Chiefs now have six running backs. This tells me a couple of things. Number one, they don't have great confidence in Clyde Edwards-Hilaire of for uh, making this season as a power running back. They don't have that. They have several others. Of course, they got the Jones kid from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's another one. Also signed a couple of rookies. But here they bring in McKinnon, who did have some bright moments toward the end of the year and in the playoffs last year. But Jarek McKinnon is also 30 years old. He's been around. He was a Vikings draft choice with them for four years, with the San Francisco 49ers for three. So he has some wear and tear on that body. And he's not a very big body. But he does have still the skills to make it a play at a time and provide depth. So we'll we'll see what happens. He may be on the taxi squad. He may be one of the regulars dressing, or at least the squad members dressing. Who who knows? Or he may not even make the team. We'll see what happens. Could be a member on the special teams. Who Good. knows? They may have a place for him there too. I know. Again, comes to depth, and uh, you got to load it up as best you can with what the best you got. All right, so this back and forth uh, between the uh, golfers and the PGA has gotten crazy. It's like uh, watching TV in the middle of the daytime, a soap opera, if you will. (laughs) Um, But we've got, of course, the U.S. Open, which isn't a PGA event. It's a different event. So those players that said, hey, we're going to go make some money overseas and come back and perform, you think they're going to get the boos and jeers from the sidelines? I think it'll be a very, very lukewarm, if any, reception from the fans. I think the basic golf fans in this country are rather annoyed at these guys. Mickelson and Dustin Johnson, just Louis Oosthuizen, people like that, who, quite honestly, and I wish they'd admit it, they left the money. We're going for the money. I mean, what basis is there for this tour? They are all exhibitions. And yes, there's a lot of money, and everybody wins money, and there's no cuts or anything like that, and there's 54 holes. These are exhibition matches. They are not the true competition that you're looking for in the PGA. And the money is coming from Saudi Arabia. That is really a big no-no. Okay, Mickelson knew he was going to be grilled by the press when he showed up at Brookline, Massachusetts. Yes, that's where the U.S. Open is, and it begins on Thursday. Incidentally, you make a very interesting point. This is not a PGA event. It's a United States Golf Association event. And the two of them work pretty well together. There's a a correlation between them. But the USGA has really come under criticism, big-time criticism, especially from the media and some of the fans, for allowing these guys to play. It's, It's Yes, they do. It's not PGA, but yes, they do work with the PGA. And... You better be in pretty good standing. And these guys are not. They have been suspended. Anyway, they will be allowed to play in the 
United States Open, which begins on Thursday. Anyway, over and above that, Mickelson was grilled by the press yesterday, and he backed off answering any of the political questions, as you would expect Phil Mickelson to do. He was hit with some pretty strong questions, but they're backing off. If they would come forward and say, hey, we, we, we're doing it for the money. We want to come back. We want to play with the other guys, but hey, the money's there, so why not? Well, you're still turning your back on your constituents. And of all people, Rory McIlroy, who is not an American, he's Irish, and an Irish citizen, really leveled a blast at this live. He said, this isn't worth the time. Yeah, a lot of money, but it's dirty money and things like that. So that's the way it's going to be at the U.S. Open. When they're introduced to the uh, galleries, and they will be, each of these golfers, I look for a very mild, if any, reception. I don't think for any booze. That's not that's not gentlemanly in golf. Par for the course, if you will, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, but I do look for criticism. So I also wanted to make this uh, this reference to um, you know there are princes in Saudi Arabia and and some of these guys and gals have more money than we can even imagine. There are a lot of times where some of your favorite movie stars, musicians, and stuff they get flown over there to perform private party. I mean, they'll drop. 20, 30, 40, 200, 500 thousand dollars for a one night, 30 minute gig, and everyone across the world of any kind of fame have probably done it. So I just think it's interesting where, like, some of these bands have gone to play for a prince's private party, you know, and no one says a word about it because they fly them in, they do it, they fly them out. It's private, no one knows. But then these guys are under scrutiny because they're doing it in a league. So it's just funny to me. They just have the spotlight on them as it's, opposed it's to the everybody else. Oppo- it is entertainment, yeah. but, it, but it's sports, and that really presents a different motif. I think what bothers me mostly is the fact that these countries. These Middle Eastern countries are very wealthy. They're wealthy because we're the ones who discovered it on their property. And what kind of credit does does that have? Zero. Nope. So the Cardinals definitely need to pad their record now after some shaky series over the last week or so. They're in Pittsburgh last night. No, they're in St. Louis. They're in St. Louis facing the Pirates. Did they get the dub? They did, (laughs) but... Only in the way the Cardinals do things. I'll I tell you, this is a St. Louis team just puzzles the daylights out of me. They're very fortunate, Mike, because they're playing in a very weak division. They and the Brewers are clearly the best teams in there. The Cubs, the Reds, and the Pirates, and the Cardinals own the Pirates. Now, those three are just simply not contending ball clubs. They're not very good. Pirates got off to a 5 to nothing lead last night. 5 to nothing in the sixth inning. Let it get away. That's how bad their pitching staff is. Cardinals uh, got some key hits, and they came back, uh, tied the game, and then took a 6-5 lead, and then got another run in the late late in the eighth inning, and scored a 7-5 win. That wouldn't, I'm, I'm not being, please don't understand, I'm not being negative, but this is not going to happen when you're playing the good team, the Dodgers, the Giants, the Padres, the New York Mets, and the New York Yankees, who the Cardinals have to play later on this summer. Uh, it's not going to happen against them, Braves, Phillies. But against the Pirates, the Reds, and the Cubs, you bet. They're never out of a game. Yeah, and you always got a chance to win those, (laughs) which uh, is a good thing for the Cardinals right now. Once we get closer to the fall, unless they fix some things, not so good news. All right, Royals, they need all the good news they can get. They're on the West Coast. How'd they do against the Giants? Lost 6-2 to two and had a 2 nothing lead and blew it. Had Brady <sighs> Singer doing their pitching for them. Brady Singer hasn't done a very good record and hasn't pitched very well, and that's a little puzzling. He's an All-America from Florida, and he's been with the Royals now. I believe this is his third year. Here's a guy, when you take a look at the line score on this game, the Giants had six runs and five hits. Now, wait a minute. How does that figure? Six runs and five hits? The Royals pitchers walked nine batters. You can't win walking that. You know, two, three, four, maybe five, but nine and oh, that ain't going to work because somebody's going to come through with a hit, and the Giants are a good team. So the Royals lose again. They're 20 and 40 on the year and just simply plummeting. They're not playing well. They're kind of like the stock market in a way. They're plummeting mm, out of. Let's not talk about that, man. <laughs> I don't even want you to get any more mad than you are every day when you walk in here with that on your mind. Oh, God bless. You should see the holes in the wall in this studio. They're all <laughs> from Ned every single morning. It's just like, it's scary. I'm getting scared. All right, so. We got uh, eight teams ready for the College World Series now? They are all there. Had the final two entries last night. Stanford defeated Connecticut and defeated them very handily. 10-5 to 5 was the final out at Palo Alto. 
and then playing in Corvallis, Oregon, Oregon State, which is a four-time former national champion, lost, lost to Auburn, and the Auburn team is very good. So now you have eight teams, and Mike, how about this? Half of the field, four of the eight teams are Southeastern Conference teams. That tells you something about that league, doesn't it? It'll be a lot of fun. Some good team, area representatives, uh, representatives. There's Oklahoma, there's Arkansas, there's Texas, there's Texas A&M. Notre Dame, Ole Miss, they're all in this thing. It's going to be a pretty good turn. It will be, um, but man, that SEC dominators <laughs> in the baseball world and football. Ned, you have a wonderful day, and I'm glad uh, it's only 92 today. 